Hey everyone, I hope you're all having a great week so far. I've been reworking some of my other builds, and one that I love using on my Zealot needed some updating. I wanted to make a build that revolves around using more effective ways to lower my ability cooldown, as well as give myself and my team more utilization in the heat of battle. And thankfully, it didn't take that long to figure it all out. This build is mostly fixated on staying close with all of your teammates and granting everyone a steady flow of defense from all enemies at any given situation. You will also have a few melee options to choose from as you will only need to rely on two specific things, but I'll talk more on that in a minute. First off, let's break down the loadout that I'm using. I went with the brand new Tigris Mark 15 Heavy Eviscerator. I finally got my hands on one and now I understand the hype. Before, my old build was using the other Heavy Eviscerator, but in order for you to enjoy that build, you would need to consistently spam your push attack after blocking. But with this Eviscerator, you can spam light attacks and let the cleaving do all the work. Since this weapon already handles chunky armored enemies with ease, I rolled my perks to do more damage to carapace armored enemies, and I threw a melee crit chance to increase our chances of having our relic ready. In order for this to work in any fashion though, you'll need any melee weapon with these two main traits. First off, it must be able to cleave any target. Without this, the cooldown reduction is just way too low to see any possible gain. And secondly, it must have the blessing shred on it. This increases your crit chance with every hit, and gives a grace period of only a couple seconds between each hit. However, if you swing and you miss a target, the stacks will be lost and you'll have to work your way back up. Now the blessings that I'm using on this eviscerator are Shred and Savage Sweep, which allows me to increase my cleave by 200% as long as I hit at least 3 enemies. And this thing tears through multiple targets like butter. Another alternative you can roll instead of Savage Sweep is Rampage. With Rampage, you'll actually gain more damage, and in some other cases like using the Devil's Claw, it can actually be more helpful when countering targets with your parry while refunding your ability's cooldown. However, I'm not really that worried about my damage here since I'm able to keep my stacks up reliably with each light swing. So in total, my Eviscerator at max stacks has a 25% chance to crit with each target that I hit. And this is really easy to proc since I'm able to cleave through multiple targets with one single swing. You'll see it a lot in this video, but I managed to get my relic back very fast, especially in horde breaks. This weapon is a crowd control monster, and it can easily destroy any flak armored enemies and maniacs in just a few swings. My biggest gripe with this specific eviscerator is that you can't really rely on a defensive action, as its push attack is meant for single target damage over its predecessor's wide sweep. If I can be honest, this one is purely great for those that don't want to rely on being defensive. You can just charge in and kill just about anything. Just keep in mind, if you're not paying attention, you can easily lose your footing and get swarmed. My other recommendations if you want an alternative weapon are the following. The original Heavy Eviscerator is great if you want a more balanced build. This provides a solid defense at the sacrifice of being able to kill heavier brutes up close. And this was my go-to for the longest time as I really enjoyed the push attacks following up with a heavy, maximizing my crit chance. Another great weapon to choose from is the Katachan Mark IV Devil's Claw Sword. This weapon can put out a ton of damage while also providing a lot of different defensive options. Since you can parry just about every single melee enemy in the game, this allows you to keep that momentum of Shred going, even with your fast special ability. If you enjoy a lighter but also faster attack speed, this would be a great choice. Now although our main highlight of this build is using our melee weapon, I still wanted an option for taking out packs of elites. Fighting one on one, you could just use the Eviscerator's special chain attack and shred through the target in a single hit, but when it comes to multiple specialists and elites, we gotta bring out the big gun. The bolt gun is a staple in the Warhammer 40k franchise as far as I'm concerned, and it's one of my favorite weapons to use in the entire game. And watching the enemy's giblets soar into the air upon releasing a single round is beyond satisfying. The one thing this weapon excels greatly in is pushing over enemies that think they could trample all over my team. With my perks dealing more damage to unyielding and carapace armored enemies, this thing tears through monstrosities and easily staggers elites. Again, I want to emphasize that this build is solely made to keep our team protected while they progress through each fight. Keeping close to everyone is our key to success. Whenever elites or monstrosities appear, that's when we gotta rely on our bolt gun to push back. My blessings on this weapon are Pinning Fire, which helps me gain power behind every enemy staggered, and Shattering Impact, which gives the target that I'm directly hitting stacks of brittleness making their armor weaker for 5 seconds. The bolt gun is going to be used for emergencies whenever we get rushed by Ragers, Maulers, or Ogren enemy types. Other than that, you can rely heavily on your Eviscerator to carry out the job. Always maintain keeping your relic up when you can, as it can save you or your team just by applying toughness back to everyone and by suppressing the enemies around you. For the first time in any of my builds, I'm actually going to recommend using a Stamina Curios with this one, as the defense on the Heavy Eviscerator is lacking a little bit. But this can also help with maintaining your efficiency with blocking and movement, so it has a lot of other great usage. I will also be taking one Toughness Curio and a Max Health Curio. The perks on them will have resistance to gunners, as they are truly the only issue I managed to have when running this build. 
followed by combat ability regen to cut a few extra seconds off of our cooldown, and I also went with some small boost to my health and toughness, as well as toughness regen speed and stamina regen for a faster defensive option. I want to stress that this is my preference. My only real recommendations here are the stamina curios as it will help a lot, and maybe some regen and toughness and stamina for consistency. But feel free to mix and match what you enjoy more when it comes to curios because everyone has a different preference. Alright, let's talk about the talent tree. I did a lot of testing with this build as I had to find ways to keep my own survivability up as well as manage damage output so I can keep my team alive and well. There are some choices that you can choose to change, however this is what I went with as I found it to be more effective on the field. Let's go over our talents starting with our main ability, Chorus of Spiritual Fortitude. This ability is our highlight of the build. With each pulse we give our allies incoherency, stun immunity, and temporary invulnerability. We also give everyone 45% toughness back and we can overcharge to a maximum of 100 additional toughness. Now the base cooldown says 60 seconds, however it's going to be much much lower. For my ability modifiers, I felt that it was needed to have the usual staggering and suppression, so Banishing Light will take care of that, as well as increase our range with our ability with each pulse. Ecclesiarch's Call is the other modifier that I went with, as it grants everyone who was within range for at least 5 of my channeled pulses 20% more damage. This should help take care of whatever we end up staggering around us, giving a great opening for all of our allies. Now for my other ability modifiers, I wanted ways to easily reduce my ability cooldown. I went with Invocation of Death which knocks a second and a half off of our ability cooldown with each critical hit. And since we have Shred in our weapon, this will proc a lot more within Horde encounters. I also found that with Pious Cutthroat, I can actually knock a lot more off in the process. Any backstab kills that we get will restore 20% of our ability cooldown. And if you didn't have any combat ability regen, that comes out to about 12 seconds with any backstab kill. And since this weapon can also rip through multiple targets when their backs are to us, this can jump up exponentially. You should have no issues regaining your relic back before the additional toughness drops off if you're actively seeking enemies and being aggressive. For all those ranged specialists, we have the Blades of Faith. With this Blitz ability, I can throw knives at anyone giving me or my teammates issues that are just out of reach. The importance of this Blitz is that it can be regenerated easily by killing elites and specialists up close, and it allows for the expanded use of passives much lower within the talent tree. Since I'm going for more of a medic vibe, taking Beacon of Purity seemed awfully fitting. This will heal anyone's corruption as long as they're within coherency, but please note that this will not cure a wound that has already been absorbed by corruption. This is a great way to make sure teammates stay close to us at all times so we can supply them with damage and toughness in return. As for my keystone ability, I chose Blazing Piety. This ability keeps our crit chance high whenever we're fighting with our team, and this also counts any kills that are happening within 25 meters of us. So on Damnation, as long as your teammates are doing their job, this should be proccing almost always. To make sure that we can maintain it easily, I'm taking Fury Rising so that all of my critical hits also count towards triggering Fury. This will make more use out of my Blessing to help reduce my ability cooldown. And with Righteous Warrior, we can gain an additional 10% crit chance from our Keystone ability. This bumps our total with this Keystone to 25%, which with maximum stacks from Shred will get us up to 50% total crit chance with every hit on an enemy, fueling both our main ability as well as Blazing Piety. Now with my passives, there are a lot of different ways we can apply damage and shift our focus on Toughness Regen and Damage Reduction. Starting off with Backstabber, this is a very useful passive to farm backstab kills. The 20% damage increase might not sound like a lot, but watching that cooldown get reduced faster and faster from helping my allies in need was when I realized it was definitely worth taking. I grabbed Blood Redemption since I needed a way to always ensure that my toughness would never drop below the threshold. This grants me 50% toughness replenishment whenever I make a single melee kill. That means in hordes you should never really have to worry about dropping in health since you'll always have ways to keep yourself alive. I also grabbed Disdain as I felt with these cleave weapons you can easily give yourself more damage upon slashing through multiple targets. At maximum stacks you can gain up to a total of 25% more damage, so always try to swing into grouped up targets or parry through them. Since we have a lot of crit chance, I felt that Enduring Faith could give us even more defensive capabilities. This gives us 50% toughness damage reduction every time we get a critical hit. And this will only last for 4 seconds, but it will proc easily with the amount of crit chance that we have. Faithful Frenzy is a pick that I like since the Eviscerator can feel a little bit sluggish to swing. But bumping up the attack speed is what I needed so I can output more hits at a faster rate. I also have Hammer of Faith for the 30% impact strength. This will help stagger enemies allowing for a follow up with a special action on the Eviscerator. This can also help tremendously with the Devil's Claw as following up with a parry can even stagger targets easier leaving them wide open for a devastating heavy blow. Punishment is feeding the cleave weapons even further. Hitting at least 3 enemies gives us an additional 30% impact strength for 5 seconds, and it stacks up to 5 times. At maximum stacks, we gain Uninterruptible, which allows us to not be stunned or staggered between each swing. This makes sure that we can follow up for more consistent damage in between the flow of combat. Now Scourge might sound like a weird pick since we're not using any blessings that are affected by bleed, but our crit chance is high enough to proc this so often. 
Whenever this does proc, we gain 10% crit chance, and this can stack up to 3 times as well, pushing our total crit chance up to 30% at max stacks. Now theoretically, if we have Fury and Shred stacks pushing us to 50% crit chance, this can push us between 60 to 80% crit chance total, giving us a ton of cooldown reduction in mere seconds. I took Shield of Contempt since we're basically a guardian for our whole team. This makes sure anyone in Coherency that takes damage gets 60% damage reduction for 4 seconds, and this can trigger every 10 seconds, again rewarding my team for sticking close to me. Sustained Assault is another amazing passive that gives us so much for so little. 4% melee damage sounds very small, but getting it up to 5 stacks can actually grant us up to 20% melee damage. And all I have to do is hit an enemy, not kill them, so Cleave once again comes in clutch. And lastly, not that amazing of a passive, but still very useful, is the Emperor's Bullet. This grants us 30% more impact damage and 10% attack speed whenever we empty our bolt gun. This becomes very useful whenever we're fighting packs of elites or a monstrosity appears. The damage output is good enough for a couple hits, but use those 5 seconds wisely. To be honest, I tend to let this pass as it was on the way down for more useful passives, but it does have its place in certain situations. My operative modifiers gave me some boost in melee damage, movement speed, suppression which helps with the relic range, a good amount of extra toughness, as well as some toughness damage reduction. Honestly, you'll have so much at your disposal with this build as long as you have the blessing shred and you're using a weapon that can cleave through targets. Since crit chance is highly effective against pretty much everything in this game, I chose to use this build to defend my allies and bring chaos to a halt. Stopping enemies in their tracks is one of the most fun things to do with this build. Let everyone stay close on your relic use, and watch them push through heretics and slice through them like butter. I really appreciate all the positive comments and feedback you all give me each time I push out another video. And I really appreciate the support from my channel members. If you too would like to be featured as a producer of my videos, consider joining the channel, because then you can have your name featured at the end of my videos just like Travis. Anyways, I'm on to make a new veteran build since last week it came runner up in the polls. But until then, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again next time. Enjoy the matches.
Righteous fire in their bellies, if you ask me. We are all part of the Omnisire's great machine. They play their role. The workers here have no time for crime. Bless these weapons, master of mankind.
to join us.